Welcome back to the Hyperbolic Coding Chamber. Today's video is sponsored by the Neolithic era, I think, because that's when dinosaurs were from, maybe. I'm not too certain, but I'm wearing a sauropod shirt today. So today's video is sponsored by uh, sauropods and pretty much re general death and destruction uh, during the time when the dinosaurs passed. So we're back once again. Good things. The Discord bot is complete. Uh, I just spent some time just now, so I'm not going to get into the technical details, but I'd give you guys a quick demo. This is just a thing to hopefully add some spy, some sp some uh, interest to the Discord, right? So you're going to want to join for this Discord feature. So as you can see, the Discord bot, you'll notice that there is a new person in the Discord under the role Lysium Codius, named after uh, the person who invented leap code in 1763 and yeah so basically what can happen is in the discord since we're trying to learn code program whatever and we technically do a lot of leak code on here the goal here is that you will pretty much get a role based on uh the problems you have solved so easy problems aren't weighted that heavily medium problems are weighted as more than easy and hard problems are weighted both more than easy and medium and I thought this might be an interesting way just to uh, just split up the discord but in reality we're splitting up the discord into a cast system so you will have to take orders from people who have solved more problems <laughs> no I'm joking but uh, it'll be cool hopefully so the way it works right now is that I'll move my camera but basically you can type in uh, into the discord you can type in validate with your leap code username mine's is Manny rain and I'll make this thick so it's easier to see right and then pretty much afterwards you'll get a code which is a human readable nothing freaky dazzling tasteless fat agitated branch and basically to verify that you own the account you can go to your leap code profile Click Edit Profile, and in the summary box right here, you can add the code. You can click, you can click Save, and then afterwards, uh, you can simply go back to Discord and type slash log in. Then you'll get a score because the link is successful, and you'll get an automatic role assigned to you. I haven't done a lot of problems, so I'm at 94, and then puts you into a bracket based on that. So there would be, there's like a ton of brackets. There's not really brackets, they're just rolls. And it might be a cool way to, you know, uh, uh, maybe people might be more interested in doing leak code. But you know what they say, whenever there's a number to be measured, it will be optimized. So think about games like Cookie Clicker. It's pretty much the gamification of leak code in a weird way, but... At the end of the day, it's really just about learning. So I wanted something that was more like effort based. So it's not like ranked or anything. It's just like if you've done a problem, then you can have a little bit of visible proof of work in the discord. So but yeah, so that is pretty much it. And also afterwards, you can remove the code and you don't really have to do anything. It's just going to auto update. So that is pretty much it. So that's pretty much the bot. If you're interested in using the role, uh, the messages are ephemeral, so no one can really see them. This is just a test channel, but uh, as you can see, you can dismiss them. And uh, you can dismiss them and you, they won't be seen anymore. So yeah, so I'll put a message in the Discord later and maybe people will be interested, maybe they won't, but just throwing it out there. And you know what is also being thrown out there? Comments on the YouTube channel. So we have some comments today. And I'm going to return my camera to where it usually is because I despise change. <laughs> uh, not really, but we have I'm new subber. Keep going. You inspire me. You inspire me, brother. More people. Yeah, but I... I feel like uh, this is just after uh, Ivan Jurek, so Ivan Jurek inspires me. This guy has been squatting for like 1,200 days, so if we could ever get to that number, 
that would be incredible but to be honest it remains to be seen so it's unknown but i appreciate the sentiment hopefully we can get somewhere good uh, we have a comment from you Raviks. do the real ones exist will the real vix please stand up that is the real question actually i'm gonna delete this comment do we even exist it's about to get really meta we don't exist you're not watching this video right now you're in a coma and we've been trying to get you to wake up <laughs> so please please wake up <laughs> this is really dark but uh yeah we're gonna get into some leak code my brain is absolutely fried so i don't know how long of a session we'll do today and yeah i think we might also try and do some game dev stuff but i also have to post my leak code i keep saying i was promising a video called 100 days of leak code and it's really supposed to be a banger video for clickbait and clicks but i still haven't made it so hopefully we get around to that but you know we don't have trouble getting around to getting people in the discord so make sure you join the hyperbolic coding chamber uh elon joined last night he has a role attached so you're going to want to get a role attached so you can be like elon we also have a bunch of other top tech executives as well as prominent musicians artists and uh local people in your community are there as well so you're going to want to join the hyperbolic coding chamber specifically for that and yeah that is important but you know it's also important doing leak code every day so <laughs> we're gonna jump into the leak code and there was a problem we were stuck on yesterday i don't think we're gonna do a super long session today this would be like yesterday we did a shorter session we're still recovering i'm thinking today might also be a shorter session as well so we're gonna do 25 minutes because sometimes you have to run to walk I mean, sometimes you have to walk to run, and your brain is absolutely fried. So, I'm gonna jump into it, and maybe we can get this done with some with some dignity. So, I'm gonna click the start button. I think it's day 136 or it's day 137, but <clears throat> we really should do an hour. We really should. Oh, but I don't feel like doing an hour. Hmm. Hmm. We really should do an hour, but I really don't feel like doing an hour. You know what? We'll meet somewhere in the middle. We'll do 30 minutes today. So here we are, we're back. Oh no, the largest perimeter wasn't what we were working on. Yeah, we were working on count binary substrings. We wrote a function to solve this. However, it, did t it, went, it pretty much went TLE. We did a weird version of the sliding window pattern that was duplicating work, but usually the sliding window pattern is to not duplicate work. Uh, let's see if I can remember the problem about reading it. I think the problem was we're given a bunch of bi we're given a binary string that consists of zeros and ones, and we pretty much want to know how many consecutive groupings of zeros and ones we can create where the number of ones and zeros are the same. So you have zero zero one one zero zero one one. I think I wrote a note yesterday. Use old solution, turn outer loop into while loop. And I think that is likely what we're going to do. This version had TLE. So I think what we're going to do.
wait, this version had TLE because you're pretty much doing n squared operations. I think we literally can just restart and then paste our old one in and we should get TLE here. We'll make some changes because we can do we can deduplicate work uh, if we use a while loop and save the indexes that we process. Yeah, we're just missing pretty much the last five test cases. The output here is like. Four, five. So we end up running out of time. Actually, if we after we break after we've seen two characters after we've seen two characters of the same length or after we've seen at least zero and one and the next thing we're seeing is the break we pretty much want to increment I pretty much want to set I equal to S sub M minus one or I equal to M minus one. if we imagine it if we imagine it once you find a grouping like one 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 right then a bunch of zeros as soon as it's different is when we now have a potential to create a new consecutive mapping Uh, maybe not exactly. We would count all these ones and then all these zeros. Maybe it's not that simple. Maybe it's not that simple. So we end up counting all these ones, then we'd have all these zeros. These ones and then all these zeros. The current version would allow us to check. The problem with this is that the worst case is that s dot length is 10 to the 5. And if this is basically n squared.
are basically saying, is there a way you can do this in linear time? Can you do this in linear time? Can you do this in linear time?
I think I figured it out. Okay. I think if we toss this whole thing in the trash, we can do less work. Because right now, for each for each character in this array, I mean each character in this string, we're going to do potentially up to n operations. I think the issue with this is not that this is n squared. I think it's that the average time complexity of this is n squared, whereas the average time complexity of a different algorithm might be linear time with the both worst cases still being n squared. I was looking at this as a sliding window problem. What if we take a look at it from a different angle and look at it as a boundary problem? So at each boundary we have since we're looking for consecutive grouped strings, right, and they have to have the same numbers of zeros and ones, this can only ever occur at a boundary. So if we were to look at something like this, right, there's a couple, there's two counts here, right? Zero, zero, one, one counts, and zero, one counts. So that's two there, right? What we're doing now is starting at zero, looking until we find another zero, then we found a one. Now we want to make sure all the ones match the zeros. So here we'd get to one, we count one. That took four iterations. Then we go to zero, look till we find a one, and then try to match them. And so we keep doing this over and over. The problem is we have to process every character. In the new version, we only do this to boundaries. So a consecutive grouping can only occur at a boundary, and this boundary here would be right here. So if we only look for boundaries, you can take the number of indices where we do that work at and reduce it. So we could do between zero and one here, that would be a boundary. So the boundary here would be like a half index. So if this index in the string is zero, this index in the string would be one, this index in the string would be two. So the half index here where the boundary occurs would be between index one and two, so it'd be at index 1.5. From there, we could create a window, right, by adding, by subtracting 0 0.5 and adding 0 0.5. And if we have the same numbers of one, zero and ones, right, then we add one to the count. Then we can expand it again. Same number of zeros and ones, we're good. We expand it again, right, and we go out of bounds, we're done. So we go to the next boundary, do the same thing, we get four, right? Go to the next boundary, which is right here. We count one, we count two, and we get six. So I think that this could work. <clears throat> Basically, we need a function that's going to find all the boundaries. So find all boundaries, implement process boundary, boundary which returns number. Or we'll call it count consecutive groups, which returns a number. Find all the boundaries. You can just create an array called boundaries, which is going to be empty. And it's actually going to store numbers. And what we'll do to find all the numbers is just we're going to iterate through the string, right, starting at 1, right, until we iterate through the whole string. I plus one. We'll have a variable called last car, which is going to start at index zero because our loop is going to start at one, and then we're going to have a current character. So we're going to say if s sub i does not equal last car, last car is going to be s sub zero. Then this is a new boundary. So for example, we take this string down here, right? Last car is going to start at one, and our loop is going to start at zero. Right, and go all the way through to the end. On this first iteration, we're going to see that 1, which is last car, is not equal to current car, which is 0. So our boundary, we want it to be the current index minus 0 0.5. So we'll do boundaries.push i minus 0 0.5. And then here we can uh, do one more thing. And that thing is we have to pretty much continually update last boundary, I mean last car. So last car is now going to equal to S sub i. So if we print 
boundaries for this first one we should get one two and three we'll just return a number All right, so we got 1.5, 3.5, and 5.5, which is perfect, because if we subtract 0 0.5 from 1.5, we get this starting 0. If we add 0 0.5 to 1.5, we get this starting 1. Same thing for 3.5, 0, 1, 2, 3. The boundary is here. You can subtract 0 0.5 and get 1, and add 0 0.5 to get 4. We'll have our starting 1s and zeros. So now, all we have to do is say, let count which is CT will return CT and we'll say for const boundary of boundaries right what we want to do is say CT plus equal process boundary and to process the boundary we're going to need access to the string and the boundary so we'll create a function called process boundary it's going to take s which is a string and the boundary which is an index which is a number it's going to return the number of groups or we can just call it what do we call it earlier count consecutive groups okay it's not working we'll call it count consecutive groups count consecutive groups so let groups equal zero and return groups at the end. And we'll change this to count consecutive groups. The way we count the groups is we need to start with basically a number of ones and zeros. Since it's a boundary, we since it's a boundary between a zero and a one, the boundary cannot exist without a, a difference in symbols. So we only get a boundary when we have at least one zero and one one. So we can just start zero and ones at one, I think. And then once that is true, what we just want to do is say starting index is going to be equal or just call it uh, ones index. This kind of arbitrary doesn't really matter. We can just actually call it group one index is going to be equal to boundary minus zero five and group two index is going to be equal to boundary plus zero point five. And then what we're going to do is say while s sub group one index does not equal s sub group two index we're saying group one and group two because it's going to be pretty much arbitrary or not relevant which group is the zeros and which group is the ones so while they aren't the same right we're going to do groups plus equal one and then group one index we're going to subtract one from it and then group two index we're going to add one to it okay so we got 16 So we got six, four, and six, which is strange. Oh, I think it's because when I went out of bounds, we keep counting. So if I go, if group one index
I'll make uh, this is kind of be kind of ghetto. I'm gonna make a function called inbound. It's pretty much gonna take an index and return if index is greater than if index is greater than or equal to zero and index is less than or equal to s dot length no is less than s dot length and then we'll add both strings both indexes have to be inbound and let me zoom out because this is kind of carnage We end up getting two. We end up getting four for the second boundary. So the second boundary would actually be here. We say zero and one. Okay, that's one. Then we say zero and one again. It's two. Ah, I see. But they're not consecutive, right? Because they're not the same. They swap sides, and that kind of breaks the rule as well. So maybe it is relevant. Maybe it is relevant. Is there a way to abstract the relevancy of the groups? Because you need to make sure that the groups still map the same. We have to do one more thing basically. We'll just basically say group one is S sub group one index. So to start, right? And group two is S sub group two index. And the other thing we'll have to make certain is that the new index that we're at still matches the original group index. So we could say S sub group one index is equal to group one and S sub group two index is equal to group two. Yes, feels, ah oh man, feels strong, man. There's just something about struggling through the problem, feeling like it's impossible, and then getting it at the end. So yeah, sitting on this one and figuring out the, the boundary could be useful. I think in every other string problem now, I'm gonna check as a potential uh, for, for boundaries to be, it could be a difference maker. But I think this one in the worst case is still n squared. Because if we have a boundary in every single string, let's just say we have a string that's 20 strings long and it's alternating zeros and ones, that's the worst case because every string is a boundary. Or every index is a boundary. Which means that count consecutive groups would do potentially up to n operations. Actually, no, it would be n squared to do two operations for each one. It would be like n times a constant. Yeah, maybe this probably averages out to linear time somehow. But let's see how they came up with the solution. Uh, the space would be linear space for the boundaries array, I think.
Interesting. So it's interesting. Yeah, the, is, it's interesting because the cheat code for this problem was what I got, which was the, the grouping. It was figuring out that the boundaries could be used as groupings. But I figured I was focusing more on the boundary. We did use groups. We pretty much used a group variable a ton. But it turns out there was another layer of optimization you could do, which is just taking the minimum of the previous Yeah, that's clever. There was some grouping mechanism afterwards, but we will stop there and we'll be back tomorrow.